more of us than not will sit on the drier side. This is the driest year to date we've ever seen. As meteorologists, we've had a whole lot of nothing to talk about this year. And for a sprawling city that sits on the edge of a desert, that's not a good thing. A record drought has put strain on a now highly regulated aquifer. Years ago, this kind of situation may have been dire. But in a year that saw the aquifer dip all the way down to 630 feet, panic never set in. Very simply, it's because we have adequate water supplies. It's true, San Antonio had water to meet demands and then some. But where is it all coming from? Every single water source in this area we're actively using. 15 different water projects from nine different sources, according to SAUCE. This chart shows what our sources were in 2021, just one year, but it gives a general idea of how our water situation breaks down. Keep in mind that the recycled water portion is only for businesses and industry, and not drinking water. You also notice that the Edwards Aquifer is still our leading source of water and often the cheapest. It's historically what San Antonio has always turned to. Prior to 2000, that's right, we were um, exclusively dependent on the Edwards Aquifer. And for good reason, it was such an abundant supply and wherever San Antonio grows, we could pretty much just drill a well and run a pipe and, and we were there. When the aquifer became regulated in 1996 to protect endangered species, it forced San Antonio water system to pivot when it comes to its water supply. For CEO Robert Puente, in that short time, he feels San Antonio has become the best positioned city in the state when it comes to water. I don't think it's hard to quantify. I think we are the best. And I don't say that with any humility. I say it as a fact. I don't know of another city in the U.S. that has this diversified water portfolio. Bold statements, but backed up by impressive facilities like the H2 Oaks plant in Southern Bear County. And they talk about the ABCs of water, aquifer storage and recovery. We have the nation's largest. Brackish water, B, we have a, a plant here. C, conservation, best in the nation. The A and B of that equation are found here at H2 Oaks. The aquifer storage and recovery, known as ASR, is an underground water bubble that sits under this expanse of land and cows. Really, it's the Creso aquifer with some extra room. That extra water is put in the bank for a rainy day, or in this case, a dry day. And because it's underground, it doesn't evaporate. In these super duper dry years, um, our demand, people want to water their grass more because it's so darn dry. So we're able to use that water that we've stored during years when it's really wet and distribute that water for people to irrigate their grass with. Next to that is the desal plant. It draws from the Wilcox Aquifer, which sits below the Carrizo. The desal water that we're using is water that nobody else is using in the area. It's too salty um, for people to use for drinking water down there. It's too salty for the, the agricultural community. That once unusable water flows from wells into this building and undergoes a transformation. Right now we're in the heart of the desalination plant and it's loud in here. The reason it's so loud is that it takes a lot of energy from water pumps to push the water through these membranes to get the salt out. While desal water only accounts for a small portion of our water supply right now, there's room for more membranes like these to increase output in the future and desal is poised to be one of our most resilient sources going forward. The water is treated to chemically match Edwards Aquifer water. It's the same for local Carrizo water too, yet another source harvested on the Twin Oaks property. It runs through aerators like this one to get rid of iron. This is the last stop for water here at this plant. It takes big pumps like this one to send the water north and west to San Antonio. They average anywhere from 10 to 50 million gallons per day. Meantime, on the other side of Bear County sits the Sauce Agua Vista Station, serving the city's north side. This site is where the Vista Ridge Pipeline ends. If that sounds familiar, it's because the 142-mile pipeline, which brings water from Milan County to San Antonio, was mired in controversy several years ago. And it remains Sauce's most controversial water source. The project took years to plan, construct, and get online. It's a generational type of project. Uh, it is the largest water P3 project in the nation. P3 meaning private sector, which SAWS worked with to get it done. The private companies took on the risk by building the infrastructure, while SAWS just accepts the water to the tune of up to 45 million gallons a day. Not all agree it was a success though. 
The Vista Ridge Pipeline was just a huge boondoggle that was put over on the citizens of San Antonio. Critics like Alan Montemayor say it wasn't worth the $900 million price tag. And the idea of taking water from others is a risky proposition. It saddled the citizens of San Antonio with uh, almost $3 billion of debt that we will be forced to pay off for the next 30 years. Saws admits it was expensive, but City Council approved the rate increases and those rate increases are now complete. Even though the aquifer dropped down to the point where we were right at 6.30, we should have been in stage three or stage four. The fact that we have something like Vista Ridge coming into San Antonio is why we're allowed, why we can say there's no reason for us to go to stage three or stage four. Montemayor argues it's too much water. And at the end of the day, it was a deal cut for water hungry big businesses and not the citizens of San Antonio. It's the individual homeowners and ratepayers that bear the brunt of that, not necessarily the businesses in San Antonio. Vista Ridge was, it's closer to, uh, the source is closer to Austin than San Antonio. We were willing to put our neck out and put our ratepayer money out there to get that water source. Conservation is also an important factor in all of this. San Antonians, it seems, are now accustomed to doing their part. Some kind of water restrictions are nearly a mainstay and drought tolerant yards are more common than ever. So in the midst of news from places like water starved Arizona and California, and after the drought that we saw this summer, San Antonio's diverse pie chart does provide a level of reassurance for the future. If we do have a repeat of the drought of 1950s, we are ready for it. For Case That Explains, I'm meteorologist Justin Horn.